Hi everyone, it's Steph and welcome back to my channel. Today I am super excited to show you guys a new farming simulator that is coming out next year called Coral Island. Coral Island was funded in less than 36 hours on Kickstarter. I know, insane. It's made by an Indonesian game studio called Stairway Games and it's set in a tropical island inspired by Southeast Asia featuring a large cast of diverse characters which look like Disney characters while weaving in environmental awareness into the centre of the game. Meet the townies. These are the people you will be sharing Coral Island with. There are over 50 islanders living on Coral Island and at least 16 romanceful characters. In each season, the islanders would change their outfits, totaling in more than 170 outfit designs with unique colour themes for every islander. This includes beach and festival outfits. Wait, is that Bova? As I mentioned before, there are at least 16 romanceable characters in this game, and you can talk to them every day, give them gifts, go on quests to them to earn their affection and love. You can also have kids. So all kids, your kids and kids around the islands will actually grow up to be teenagers now. You can also have up to two children and they will have their own personalities and interests which you can influence as they grow up or let them discover it on their own. Now it wouldn't be called Coral Island without seeing some coral. So in this game you can dive into the ocean to restore the coral reefs and the more you dive you can lock deeper levels. And if you clean up the seabed enough, you might encounter some rare fish and have the ability to collect ocean kelp. So far from what I can see, there are four different diving areas with four different depths. So maybe it's a skill that we can level up, we'll have to find out. On these diving adventures, you might encounter some very interesting folk. Merfolk, and specifically the Merfolk King. What we know so far is that the Merfolk Kingdom will feature one festival and that there are 20 Merfolk for you to meet befriending 10 of them and you may even possibly find love with two of them. Now I'm not so sure if that works but it's always been a little mermaid's dream of mine so I'm gonna take it. You also don't understand their language at first so you'll need to decipher their language by developing relationships with them. This clip I'm about to show you is an old prototype video of how you fish in the game so keep in mind that things may change when early access comes out and even alpha access comes out. From my understanding, it looks like there is a different mechanic to what we're normally used to in Stardew Valley for fishing. It seems to lean more towards the Animal Crossing side of things, where you set out your line and you wait for the fish to bite and then you reel it in. And you can see there are probably three different bars of potentially strength, I'm assuming, to show how far out you want your line to go. The more we clean up the ecosystem by underwater diving, the more fish we can catch. And so far we know that there are more than 60 fish to catch in the game, with hints to legendary or rare species that you can catch. I'm super excited to actually experience the fishing mechanic in the game, because sometimes that can really make or break a farming simulator for me. Now it wouldn't be a farming simulator without farming. In this clip you can see your familiar farming, hoeing, watering, planting seeds, chopping trees down as you build out your dream farm. In this game, there are over 75 plantable crops in the game, ranging from classic crops like tomato, potato, cabbage, and including those that are native to Asia. There are also two ways for you to plant fruit in this game, fruit trees and fruit plants. And I'm super excited that they've included fruits such as dragon fruit, mango, and durian. As you start building out your dream farm and leveling up your skills and your resources, you'll be able to build a coop or a barn to house your livestock in. The animals that live in a coop will usually produce one egg and sometimes a feather if they're feeling happy. And barn dwelling animals will need to be brushed and fed daily to keep their produce flowing. The animals that we'll be able to house in our barns are peafowl, chicken, quail, and duck. So nothing too out of the ordinary, but I do appreciate the variety of animals that we can have in a barn as opposed to just a chicken and a duck. So that's super exciting. And in this clip, you can see that we went outside and used scythe or sickle to cut down some grass, which creates fodder to give to our animals. But I will be interested to learn if we can actually invite them outside so that they can graze on regular growing grass as opposed to just grass that we give to them inside. As for our barn dwelling animals, we see the usual culprits, a goat, a pig, a cow, a sheep, but we also get llamas and a luwak. Look at the luwak. Like just take a moment and look 
at this luwak. For those of you who don't know what a luwak is, they are known in Indonesia for the delicious coffee beans that come from them passing coffee cherries. Because these coffee beans are so delicious, unfortunately luwaks are actually quite endangered. So I love that they put this in the game to raise awareness as well. You can also explore the caverns to mine precious gemstones to upgrade your tools and areas around your farm. As you can see, there is a rope helping you move between levels, so it isn't a ladder exactly as you would probably be used to in Stardew. What I'm noticing here is that the stone only takes one hit to break, so I'm wondering if there's going to be like harder or tougher stone to break in the future. Also, I don't know if any of you noticed, but this circular hole is different from the square hole that was up above. And similar to Stardew Valley, Coral Island will be utilizing elevators to act as checkpoints between each level. For those of you who don't know me, I am a huge completionist, so I'm so excited to get stuck into the museum and bug collecting portion of the game. I think we've been absolutely spoiled with the Animal Crossing Museum, so I'm waiting to see what Coral Island will give us. The expanded museum and bug catching elements of the game were actually implemented in the stretch goals of 175,000 and 200,000 from the Kickstarter, which is ridiculous. Now, I don't like spiders, but that's kind of cute. I mean, it's all right. From the trailer alone, you can see there are so many customization options in the house, outside the house, and even for your character. And what is that, a monkey as a pet preference? I don't, how do you even have a pet monkey? I don't get it. Not only can you level up your skills, I guess, in farming and ranching and all that, but you can actually put those skills into skill trees, which I don't know about you, but they always stress me out because I want to have a point in everything. As you can see, I'm a big fan of Stardew Valley mods. I think I run my game with about 150 plus mods each time. And you can actually see my recent video on my favorite 1.5 mods here. Which is why I think I almost cried when we reached the 500k stretch goal on Kickstarter for mod support. This means that they are literally hiring more developers that will be assigned to continually expand moddable parts of the game. How insane is that? On your farm, you'll get a companion. We can have a cat, a dog, a monkey, and I think there was a fox. There's also an endgame mythical pet that you can work towards, and yes, you can pet the dog. Once you've established your farm, there will be an endgame island hopping adventure. You can also expect four player online farms, couch co-op, and more multiplayer modes. In the game, there'll be dynamic weather conditions, including sun, wind, rain, storm, and snow, both with the day and night cycle. And if you're one of those people who feel like you're always running out of time in the day to do all of your tasks, you can even adjust the passage of time with a time slider. You'll be able to add a community garden for the locals, build a brand new museum by taking part in community projects to build and liven up the town. And of course, we can't forget about the wall. The Coral Three are said to have worked together to maintain the balance of Coral Island. I hope that the Goddess of Flowers, Merfolk and the Giants play a huge part in the island's history and the current day developments because I absolutely love lore and I just really love this character design and honestly, like, how could you not? And just like Jojo Corp, we have Popperfish Drilling Corp who is trying to drill oil on and around Coral Island and definitely do not love nature. Coral Island will be available on PC and consoles, however the console port won't come until much later in the campaign and I believe it might even be after the PC version has been fully released. Alpha access for Coral Island starts next week, with limited features available. Unfortunately, there won't be any capture or streaming allowed, as the studio are hoping to finalise the direction of the game by gathering our feedback and suggestions first, but I will for sure be making videos once we're allowed to. If you've fallen in love with this game from this video, please make sure to give a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. I try and show my love of farming simulators through streaming and through my videos, so it would really mean a lot. And if you have fallen in love with Coral Island, you can still pre-order the game and get access to some Kickstarter exclusives. I'll put all the links that you'll need down below in the description box and in the pinned comment. I hope you all enjoyed this video and are excited as me for this game. Keep an eye out for more Coral Island videos in the future. Bye!